From the heart of Philly, this is CBS News Philadelphia. Right now at 6, a massive hole in Mullica Hill. Rushing water causes the ground to suddenly give way. Now we're learning about the warning sign from neighbors that may have been missed. Good Friday evening. I'm Siafa Lewis Yuki and Jessica have the day off. This is a live view from Chopper 3. You can see the massive area created when a section of Swamp Road collapsed this morning, leading to power outages and road closures. The impacted area isn't too far from Main Street, Mill Road, and Mullica Hill Road. CBS News Philadelphia reporter Ryan Hughes spent the day with shocked residents trying to figure out what happened and how this will get repaired. The mayor of Harrison Township says he intends to declare a state of emergency to help with possible funding. After inspecting the collapse site, he says the damage is worse than originally thought. A major hole in the earth, some 50 feet deep, now sits where part of Swamp Road in Mullica Hill once stood. And cell phone video shows the torrent of water rushing down a ravine after the roadway collapsed. Some neighbors say they woke up to the sound of trees and power poles snapping. My dog was jumped on the bed because I was actually st still in bed. And um, she jumped on the bed and she was shaking and she was shivering. I couldn't understand what happened. The collapse happened around 7.30 Friday morning. Harrison Township yeah. Mayor Lou Manzo says a clogged drainage pipe sent rainwater under Swamp Road. And when it gave way... Millions of gallons of water was sent into Raccoon Creek and flowed downstream. The pressure blew out that section of the embankment and the roadway on that private road. It was like a river running through there. And I, I couldn't believe there was that much water. Power and water were knocked out for some time to several homes near the collapse. Luckily, no homes or nearby bridges were damaged. According to the mayor, neighbors have complained about the clogged pipe before in the embankment, but he says machines cannot easily get there. The only way to get and clean these pipes out uh, is to be done manually. And yes, the fact is those residents, knowing better than anyone, uh, have expressed those concerns to us. And the mayor says the Department of Environmental Protection will now come here to inspect the damage here on Swamp Road to help determine what the next steps are. In Mulca Hill, Ryan Hughes, CBS News, Philadelphia. Turning to the weather, all good things must come to an end. After a few gorgeous days, some spotty showers are moving into the area tonight. You can see the clouds there rolling in over Atlantic City, and that's not the only big change in store for us. Meteorologist Grant Gilmore is in for Bill Kelly with your next weather forecast. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh, and there is some ugly out there. <laughs> I guess if you, if you like the warmth that we've had for the last couple of days, you may not like what we have in store for next week. The last few days, though, Man, they've been on point, haven't they? Temperatures have been well into the 70s today. Believe it or not, even with the cloud cover around through a majority of the day, temperatures still peaked at 75 degrees. It's after yesterday's high of 77 degrees. Back to Wednesday, 73. Even on Monday, we were saying it was a nice day. And that was when we had high temperatures at 55 degrees. For the first half of March, we've only had one day. That was Sunday. That was colder than normal. And we will be colder than that with that high of 50 going into early next week. High temps around the rest of the area today. We're generally in the low and mid 70s. Allentown struggled to make it out of the 60s today. 68 for you, but even that, not bad. We're finding temperatures cooling across the area. Cold front is pushing to the south and east. That's dropped temperatures into the upper 60s for Philly. Millville, you're now at 69 degrees. Atlantic City, Wildwood also in the 60s. Cold front moving through as we speak. Those chances of showers mainly across central and southern Delaware as the cold front continues to push to the south and east. There across South Jersey, Atlantic City, down into Cape May. You may see a few of those showers as well. But more rain farther to the south. That will stay to the south, giving way to what should should be a pretty nice evening. Temperatures just a little bit cooler than yesterday evening. Looking at temperatures gradually cooling through the 60s, 58 degrees by 9 o'clock. Your weekend is not bad by any stretch of the imagination. We'll talk about the weekend and look ahead to some freezing temperatures for spring. Coming up in just a few. Siapa, back to you. Except for the freezing part. Thank you very much, yeah. Grant. Mm -hmm. All right, make sure you're ready for the changes in the forecast by going to cbsphiladelphia.com slash weather. That is where you can track next weather radar and get all of the latest conditions. A Jewish restaurant owner in Narberth is outraged tonight after the words Free Gaza were spray painted on the side of her building. The owner believes she is a target of anti Semitism. CBS Philadelphia reporter Josh Sanders spoke with the owner as she prepares for the Jewish Sabbath. 
outside Nana's kitchen and catering. Narborough city officials are scrubbing away the words free Gaza. An empty spray can used sits next to the building. I'm angry about the racist, the racism, the anti-Semitism. Gladys Fink Sindarowitz is owner of Nana's Kitchen. It's been a staple in the Narborough community for the last 15 years, offering a Jewish and kosher cuisine. At the beginning of Shabbat, distraught by the graffiti on the side of a restaurant. We're going to still hear proud, happy, and still, yes. and still, yes. and still yes. smiling, as Central. we know, even, even it hurts, it hurts so much, it even personally hurts. We feel violated by a writing on our wall. Narberth has a thriving Jewish community, but since the October 7th Hamas-led attack on Israel, many in the Jewish community here say they have felt a new sense of fear in their peaceful and quiet neighborhood. I'm 65, so we all grew up learning about the Holocaust with uh, people's uh, parents maybe having been survivors, but never in our life did we ever think that a little business in Narberth would have an anti-Semitic comment painted on the wall. Daphna Offner and Sharona Dury came out to support Gladys, both outraged by the vandalism. They can say what they think, but not a graffiti. I hate graffiti on the wall of a Jewish business. We are defending ourselves. We have the right to exist. She says she's moved by the outpouring of support. But beyond the fear and anger, she says together her community will continue to be a light. We are not alone, as you see. That's my people. While Narberth police are determining a motive, they have reached out to the Anti-Defamation League because of the proximity of two Jewish-owned businesses in the area. Josh Sanders, CBS News, Philadelphia. Philadelphia police hope new surveillance video will help solve the deadly shooting of an 88-year-old grandfather in West Philly. Police say the shooter was seen in a silver Nissan Altima model year 2018 or 2019. It has dark tinted windows and denting on the front passenger side. Richard Butler was shot and killed as he drove through the intersection of Arch and Dewey Streets on March 5th. There is a $20,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. In New Jersey, Evesham police have arrested a teenager for last month's burglary at the Urban Tactical Firearms Store on Route 70. Surveillance video here shows a group of suspects breaking into the store and stealing firearms and ammunition before escaping in a white Hyundai Elantra, which was stolen. Police have since recovered the car, which led them to a 15-year-old suspect. They also found three of the five stolen guns. A bald eagle is being nursed back to health after it was rescued in Ocean City. Humane Society of Ocean City and New Jersey Fish and Wildlife employees helped catch the injured eagle earlier this week. They're calling him Eddie. We're told Eddie is now being taken care of at Tri-State Bird Rescue in Newark, Delaware, so he can be released back into the wild. Day three of NFL free agency and Eagles general manager Howie Roseman is still putting in the work revamping the Eagles roster. Sports director Don Bell is being kept busy by Howie being busy. Yeah, That's so from knows. Eddie to Eagle to Howie and the Eagles, right? There you go. So in 1972, a legendary music group from Philadelphia released a song that became an instant classic. The stylistics gave us breakup to makeup. Fast forward to the here and now, and maybe the Eagles should have played that during today's press conference. After spending one season with the Lions, C.J. Gardner-Johnson signing a three-year deal with the Birds worth up to $33 million. He was on the Super Bowl team in 2022, but left town salty after the team would not give him the contract he was looking for. On the way out the door, he called people here bleeping obnoxious. He said, I can't stand those bleepers. But apparently, he and the fan base just break up to make up. I'm obnoxious. I thought it was a compliment, to be honest with you. So, I mean, I mean, all jokes aside, it wasn't. I was just in my feelings. You know, you want to be somewhere so bad to the point where, you, you know, you can't control certain things. So, certain things were said, but there was, was no meaning to it. I mean, I'm back. So, I guess we all happy. Family reunion, huh? I, we, we all have to laugh, right? <laughs> don't, don't we have to laugh? It was a compliment. Uh -huh. uh, meanwhile, Josh Sweat is staying put. The defensive end was in trade rumors, but he and the Birds have agreed to a restructured contract. Sweat can reportedly make nearly $13 million this season and gets $10 million guaranteed. There's a new QB in town. The Eagles have traded for Steelers quarterback Kenny Pickett and a fourth-round pick. 
Pittsburgh gets a third round selection this year and two seventh rounders. Pickett became expendable when the Steelers signed Russell Wilson. All right, coming up later on in the show, he's now one of the best kickers in the biz and he's being paid like it. You'll hear from Jake Elliott. He deserves every penny. No doubt. All right, thanks, DB. You got it. Another former Philly great is returning. Coming up on CBS News Philadelphia, the new project bringing former Philly shortstop Jimmy Rollins back to Philly. Plus, it is a match made in med school how this couple found love while also taking care of patients during the height of the pandemic.